Hey guys, welcome back to Undulations. In this video, I'm going to be picking up right where I left off in the last one. I'm going to be talking more about how to use Little Bits technology to control synthesizers. So if you missed that one, you should check the description below and click on the link, go take a look, come back here, and then you can follow along. All right, so let's dive in. Okay, so this is a good setup, and I'd say if you just wanted to have a really nice external LFO for the microbrew, that, that would be the way to go. Uh, but if you wanted to add some more, and this is sort of the thing about little bits, and it's sort of like a, a writ small version of modular synthesis in itself, which is that uh, you don't have to buy it all at once. You can add a piece here or there and it is also in the same sense as modular combinatorial where that you buy one new thing and it might add another handful of new things many things that uh, work with gear that you already have uh, what would i do next uh, i think i would get another oscillator and so the thing about another oscillator i'm going to take the random out put another oscillator in um, that enables you to do more complex modulations on the sound. And so I'm going to come out of the pitch. I'll choose, say, the filter, see if we can get something out of that. And so I'll do something sort of obvious. I'll turn the, I'll turn one, the first oscillator of these two oscillators in series sort of down to more rhythmic frequency. And then that is gating the second oscillator. Turn that up. You can mix them sort of similar frequencies and get a sort of a roughness to it. It's a lot of nice effects. Okay, so what can really make this nice is the mixer bit, which I have here, which is just basically what you would think based on the name. You can take two uh, signals, in this case they'll be oscillator signals, and you can mix them together. So instead of having things in series, instead of the oscillators in series, we will have them in parallel. I'm also using a power splitter here to be able to control, to have the oscillators powered independently. And then I'll uh, go like that. And uh, one thing you might think about is that if you did buy a second oscillator, you might not need a dimmer then. You could just use the mixer to control uh, the LFO depth. Okay, so I'm gonna play a note over here. Let me go into something like the um, pulse width and see if that gives a little bit more clear uh, indication of what we're getting. And then, you know, I'll just play like a sequence with that, and lower it a little. And so it gives some really nice uh, changes and variations to the microbrute sound. And then from there, what I'd like to do is show that there's also a envelope bit and uh, I'm not quite sure the envelope bit price right offhand, but you can go to the Little Bits website and uh, find all of this out. Okay, so I've got a pulse bit, an envelope bit, and uh, 
that's going into the CV out. I've got that going into the pulse width modulation. And we'll see if we get something. Might just go into pitch where you can hear it the most clearly. So what that is, is there's a um, envelope here, not the envelope up on the micro root, but a totally independent envelope that's just attack and decay. And uh, I'm using a pulse to trigger that envelope. But that might sound good in the filter. The last thing to think about is what if you had a second CV bit? But having a second CV bit, it would allow a couple of different things. It would allow you to control two parameters. So basically you could have two external LFOs, but what it also enables you to do is to put the bit into the system and then uh, you can take CV out from the uh, microbrute, take that over through the oscillator, and then back out, and I've got it going into the filter, and you can get some nice sounds that way. A little bit reminiscent of a delay, you can change that to speed it up. And so this is something to basically uh, think about how you would employ. And as soon as you start to get some splitters, multiple components, and a lot of cables, it is very fun to play with and there are a lot of possibilities. And so it's quite a bit that you can learn to play with. And I feel like that for the money, it is of great value for somebody that has one of these synthesizers. Okay, so that was a lot about little bits and about the Arteria Microbrute. And if you're a little bits enthusiast and want to get a microbrute, I think you can get a red one for like $230. Uh, if that's not your cup of tea, then you might consider the Castle 1.5 from Basel Instruments. That also has CV inputs. Um, if you've got a microbrute already, then I think that the little bits is really a great deal to add some diversity to the sounds. So I'm leaving that stuff, and in the next video, I want to go back to the aforementioned no coast and start a series that I call one hitch wonders where you basically take one patch cable and try to figure out the types of sounds that you can get. And so these will be short and uh, hopefully interesting. And uh, I think it's a great way to learn about modular synthesis and CV. So, we're going to do that. I appreciate you watching. And if you're interested in one more thing, you can stay and watch for the end. All right. Thanks a lot.
Hey guys, if you're still with me, I just wanted to talk about one thing to, that can really add a whole lot of texture to the microbrute, and that is by getting a MIDI bit. And so it looks like this. Uh, there's various ports on it. You can read about it, but I am have it in line with the CV bit and the dimmer. I've got Ableton Live running a clip over here, just something sort of random, but what you can hear is that I'm going to play a note. And that additional rhythmic texture that you've got running on live is coming through. Right now it's changing the cutoff filter frequency. And so it gives a nice groove. And that's something that you would not be able to get out of the native sequencer on this microbrew. Then, last thing, what if that MIDI voltage, so you've got a MIDI clip, it's got a MIDI note value, it's coming in, I'm going to have it change the frequency on the oscillator, and then I'm going to have that go through the CV into the filter, and you can get some really nice textures, especially if you switch over to saw wave. And I feel like that is a super cool sound. All right. Thanks again for watching.